Um, who rides who rides the dash? If you haven't ridden the dash, it's one of the best rides in town. Um, good vehicles, great air conditioning, it's very affordable. And it stops all over campus. So if there's just one of those really hot days and you don't want to walk all the way to North Campus, you can go around campus on the dash. There's a $9 student pass. <laughs> That's right. Um, so please do check them out. I think they're a, a wonderful transit provider. And today Nora is here to talk about microtransit, which is one of these sort of buzzier things um, on the cutting edge of transit. So as Lisa mentioned, I'm a transportation planner with uh, LADOT. I work in the transit group. Uh, so that just means that I help to bring in money and implement new projects. Uh, we currently provide DASH, Commuter Express, and City Ride programs. Those are all public transit services uh, throughout the city of Los Angeles. Um, I got my start at uh, LADOT because I went back to school for uh, city planning as well as my master's in uh, traffic engineering. Um, but before that, uh, my background has always been rooted in uh, social equity as well as uh, uh, basically nonprofit work in uh, land use and housing development. Um, but I'm very excited to be at LADOT because a lot of the work that we do is very much in, in, uh, aligned with um, things that are happening in the city of LA. Um, but uh, at a larger context, um, uh, the city of LA is experiencing a transportation renaissance. We're doing all types of cool pilots and different experimental projects. I'm going to bring up uh, one of my colleagues later. Her name is Robin Oxu. She's working on a cool concept called uh, mobility hubs and it basically brings together all of these like cool uh, transportation projects like my microtransit. So microtransit is basically a jitney service. If you've been to Asia or any other parts of the world, uh, they basically uh, operate unregulated. So that basically means that uh, buses and taxis are uh, merged together and then people just drive around in their own vans and pick people up based on uh, the need that they feel is there in their communities. Um, and so uh, LADOT wants to uh, uh, basically uh, propose to implement a microtransit micro pilot because of, uh, we know that there's an interest and need because everybody's using Uber and Lyft throughout the city of LA. Um, and we know that we need to adapt this uh, mobile application technology in order to uh, keep up with uh, people's needs and uh, changing demographics uh, throughout LA. So this pilot is called LA Now. We're proposing to launch it in the west side of LA. So this includes Palms, uh, Mar Vista, Venice, and Del Rey. Um, this area uh, is pretty large. It's about 150,000 people that live there and their needs, especially their transportation needs, are very different. Um, we think that this is a good idea for the west side because of the expo expansion, and we know that uh, it's difficult for people to reach the metro station without some kind of a first mile, last mile solution like the LA Now service. So a little bit about microtransit. Um, so as you know, uh, Dash and uh, the Orange Line, it's basically a fixed route service. So that means uh, the public agency, like LADOT, we basically allocate all of our public resources to high commercial and uh, high commercial areas, such as like Wilshire or Spring Street. So uh, basically more bang for our buck. We are ensured that uh, more pedestrians are walking and people will actually use our transit service. Whereas um, in the microtransit world, uh, such as a Lyft line or Uber pool, we basically cover the area. And there isn't exactly a schedule or a frequency. It just means that if you request a service, uh, your ride's guaranteed to be there at some point. And so, as I mentioned, our project area is in uh, the west side. It's in Palms, Mar Vista, Venice, and Del Rey. Uh, the population's 150,000. Uh, two areas, Venice and I believe Mar Vista, they're fairly affluent, so it's kind of hard to tell whether people are willing to switch from their cars to uh, a public transit service. But then we think that there's an opportunity to introduce new people to this type of service just because we have Wi-Fi. Uh, people, it's meeting people's uh, needs on the spot instantaneously. So the goals of our service is basically to actually launch the pilot. It takes a while because we work for the city of LA. <laughs> and uh, 
There's a lot of bureaucracy and government processes, but uh, our intention is to launch the pilot probably at the beginning of 2019. Um, we want to demonstrate the pilot for a year. So that means we need um, to evaluate what the, the geography as well as the demographics are at uh, the project area right now and then find out, what it, find out the impacts of the service after we've launched it. And uh, at a larger scale, uh, this project is actually part of the transit service analysis, which is something our DOT um, hired a consultant to basically evaluate all of our transit service throughout the city of LA. And we asked that they make recommendations about, on how to improve the service. So they made several recommendations, including adding a microtransit service in the west side, as well as increasing uh, frequency throughout the city of LA, and then adding new routes in the city of LA. And we've done a lot of the out, uh, outreach and marketing. Um, we basically have an outreach team out there on foot um, employing a political style campaign. That means they're actually just knocking on doors um, handing out flyers and asking people to fill out surveys. And we also know that in order to make this program successful, we have to combine social media. So we've actually, actually been crowdsourcing uh, a lot of information from the community. And this heat map actually shows uh, demand for the service. So we've done a lot of research. Um, at the project management level, um, we've tried to employ more of a tech sector project management style. So that means um, because there's tech involved, you can change uh, the way you do projects or uh, fulfill projects throughout the entire phase of the project. But in the government, we tend to wait till the end in order to make those changes, and then it costs us a bunch of money. <laughs> so our service model, after we've done a bunch of outreach, is called a corner-to-corner -corner service. So that means um, based on the votes and the outreach that we received, um, people want to be picked up uh, between one to two blocks from where, th from their origination and their destination. So the um, results from the community outreach uh, can provide insight about the attractiveness. And we also know that uh, based on that information, it'll evaluate the optimal number of vehicles we'll uh, distribute throughout the project area. So these projects obviously have challenges. As you know, uh, the city of Los Angeles is gigantic. There's a population of 4 million. As I mentioned earlier, um, the west side has about a, at least the project area has a population of about 150,000. And the needs are different from one another. Uh, Del Rey and Palms may have a lot more transit users, but uh, Venice and Mar Vista, people tend to prefer to drive alone. And so the basic, the, we want to find out how we can like switch uh, folks from using their car and see if they can hop on to one of these types of vehicles if uh, that option is there. And we know there's a lot of opportunities uh, because there's obviously a potential to introduce new riders to this uh, different service because it's dynamic and it's based on uh, people's needs. And we know there's a potential for improving the customer service experience because if you've taken public transit recently, you're like, oh, uh, this is kind of scary. There's interesting people on the bus. So where we are and next steps. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the, the government process takes a while. So we're waiting for that to be approved through our city council. And after that, we're gonna finalize the technical details of our mobile application. And then from there, we're going to continue to do uh, community outreach and uh, marketing. And then we want to work with the University of Southern California to uh, develop some sort of a research framework um, or an evaluation of this project. We're actually also working with a, another tech company. They're a startup. They're called Motive. They actually provide um, these little debit cards for uh, folks who are unbanked. And so that is a uh, workaround and a way uh, that we want to serve uh, people who might actually want to use the service, including uh, low-income communities and middle-income communities. And then we're also working with Metro's TAP group uh, to basically bring this into the larger transportation network. We want to basically hatch this uh, project out of uh, city government because um, there is a level of ethics and compliance involved that we feel that we can bring to the public. Um, so 
although we do talk to Uber and Lyft about potentially doing different projects, we feel that the public safety is probably more important than um, doing something easily. There's lots of microtransit services. There's one out in Venice right now. I think it's called Go to LA or Go Car LA. So they actually use golf carts and then they're also um, equipped with a mobile application. Our purpose is r really to bring commuters to and from uh, the metro station. So um, it's not gonna be open because uh, we're trying to keep people safe and it's during the, the, the AM peak hours and the PM peak hours. So we wanna basically take people to and from a place at fastest speed as possible. We're looking to expand if this is successful, um, but this was initially suggested as a, uh, a good area for microtransit because we did a transit service analysis about three years ago. And so that community was actually very active and they actually wanted a fixed route service. Um, we did a lot of the calculations and the math and it didn't pencil out. So this community, um, they were open to the idea of microtransit. So it's actually an experiment. So we're testing it out for a year to see if it works. And if it works here, then we will uh, expand elsewhere. And I know that there's a lot of like transit needs um, through South LA as well as the rest of Los Angeles. So we're hoping to expand. Traditional metrics that we've been using is uh, on-time performance between, uh, we call these virtual stops. So. These virtual stops are basically not real stops. There's no schedule or time associated with them. It's just where they're just common pickup points. So based on those, uh, based on those, and we applied it to some sort of a predictive model uh, with our app developers, and it basically shoots out like this is the suggested time. So it takes about 20 minutes from stop to stop, maybe, and then there's two there's two time stops. They're basically over at Met the Metro Station at National and Exposition, and then one over at Abbott Kinney. So those are time stops. And um, based on that, we, sorry, what was your question again? Oh, so on time performance, yeah. So based on that, we uh, are, we basically, we basically know our trip time between the farthest end and then the, the closest end. And so we know that it's gonna take a while. So on time performance is one of them, as well as, uh, number of downloads for the app, uh, number of repeat users, um, and um, let's see special ones. Basically, uh, number of users and number of downloads. Those are the new ones that vary from traditional transit operations uh, metrics, and we think that those are better indicators of uh, return, uh, repeat customers than probably our traditional transportation metrics. The fare is set at some uh, uh, between one to two dollars. It's a public transit fare, so there's no premium. It's just a uh, dollar or two dollars flat. And in doing our cost analysis, we also weighed in. Um, oh, if somebody's going to use this as their first mile, last mile solution, they're going to have to go to the expo station and also pay another dollar seventy-five. And if they're going to drive to one of these stations. Um, how much is it going to cost to pay for parking versus using the service? So we basically um, priced our fare lower than it would be to park at the station. And I think the station is like $3 or something. Um, and so at $1 or $2, you're probably going to save yourself um, a lot of heartache when you're looking for parking and um, you don't have to pay $3 a day. Um, in terms of the cost analysis, we know that uh, microtransit uh, service is successful when it's combined with the fixed route service. So we're looking at all parts of our transportation network to see if there's ways to incorporate uh, microtransit service to make uh, operational costs for the, uh, for the transit agency uh, a little bit less. Uh, there's going to be in the morning and the evening, so that's a.m. peak periods, which is uh, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., and then in the evening, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, during the weekday, Monday through Friday, for the pilot period. And then if we see that there's uh, like an interest or a, like during different times of the day, we have the flexibility to shift those times. Yeah, we're looking to add uh, bike racks. Um, it's also a CNG, which is, uh, what is that again? Carbon, yeah, it's basically uh, a natural gas. Compressed uh, natural gas. Yeah, there we go. Carbon con compressed natural gas, there we go. Um, and we're looking to actually replace these vehicles eventually with electric vehicles. Uh, but the technology's not there yet, but it is always on our mind. 
Uh, customer satisfaction is also one of our indicators. So kind of like an Uber or a Lyft, we want to be able to find out, you know, when you use your Uber app, they give you, they give you like five stars and you're like, uh, maybe it's a three because he almost killed me. Uh, <laughs> um, but in this case, we'll send out a survey, uh, probably through the app um, and through their email um, and basically ask them what their feelings are uh, about the service. And um, LADOT is also launching a transportation happiness metric, uh, which we will uh, try to incorporate into uh, some of more of our transportation services. We've been working with an app developer, and so their technology is basically a routing software. So kind of like a souped up version of Google Maps, it'll basically give our bus driver like the best route, the more, the most real time information about how to like get around like the uh, busiest thoroughfares and um, based on trip time. We are very, actually very like protective about uh, customer information at uh, the DOT, actually just in city government in general. We have uh, data sharing agreements and, uh, no, not sharing agreements. We have a data agreement with uh, our app developer um, in which all of the private information of our customers is encoded. Um, so we only get like the information about uh, the person traveling, but we never get a specific identifier about the person. Many of the communities are really uh, uh, accepting of the service. Uh, Delray and Palms, they love it. Uh, Mar Vista, they're warming up to it, um, as well as Venice. The service is actually credit card based, and it's kind of like your Uber and Lyft, you have to register. Um, to navigate uh, the fo to navigate and provide the service to folks who don't have a credit card, uh, we're actually working with a tech startup called Motive uh, Lamondo, and they actually provide um, debit cards to uh, individuals who don't have credit history or a bank account. And so, um, while our outreach folks are out there uh, talking about the LA Now service, they are also sharing with them hey, you could also sign up for this, um, not just for the service, but for the rest of your life if you wanna get some credit history. Yeah, the wait time, uh, it's actually up to the public agency to kind of set the parameters. Um, since we've done a study to see how long it takes to get the, the buses from one place to another, it could take anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. So based on that, we allotted maybe about 10 minutes from the passenger requesting the service to the the bus actually showing up. Usually um, it's about five and a half square miles. Our service area is about six and a half. I, I believe uh, LA Metro um, overseas, they are our larger uh, sister agency. They're also evaluating whether a uh, public uh, microtransit service for different regions in, actually three regions in LA County is feasible. Um, I know that they've identified uh, somewhere Burbank, um, uh, San Gabriel Valley, I don't know what the third area is, but um, we work closely with them, so I imagine that they would be supportive of um, an expansion. So one of the things we've pretty much proven over the past few years is it's really hard to make money on short trips. Um, and so this is going to be essentially a rail supporting service on the part of the LADOT. Um, how do you envision being able to sustain this over the long term? Because I just don't see fares helping you out all that much. Yeah, we, um, fare box recovery for fixed route service is like 20%, right? Um, we don't make that much money anyways, uh, but we do budget for subsidies. We have a really healthy public subsidy program for uh, public transit service. So um, we imagine that if we wanna deploy more of these micro transit services for short trips uh, throughout the transportation network, we would have to do a really good feasibility analysis uh, to see where we would save money. So for instance, um, we've been looking at uh, late night service for downtown Dash. So there could be an opportunity to replace an actual fixed route schedule, a fixed route service with a, a micro transit in the evening. And we think that there's cost savings in that. Um, also probably really good service improvements when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't get 10-minute 10 10 headways at night. No, at you least. don't. And you just want to get out of there at night. So it's good for the late night goers. LADOT is a city agency. So we operate, uh, we basically manage all of the, the right-of-way, uh, city streets, and um, public transit service like DASH and Commuter Express. 
Um, and so LA Metro, they're a large uh, uh, bus agency, but they're also the funding administrator for the county. And so um, we try to coordinate as much as possible, but um, they will also, uh, um, every, basically everybody wants to get into microtransit, so they'll get into microtransit as well, but we'll try to coordinate to see if um, we can uh, meet somewhere. Ridership is success on any form of public transit. It doesn't matter whether they're trying to go to the expo station or they're just trying to get from Venice to Mar Vista. I think uh, as long as we're um, trying to give people options and they're choosing to use another service as opposed to driving like a mile to wherever they need to go, I think that's success. When we identified uh, these virtual stops where these, these virtual stops in our project area, we identified locations that are safe and away from um, the right of way or oncoming traffic. And so we have actually uh, submitted our information to our engineers to review to make sure that we're not um, getting in the way of oncoming traffic or build up in traffic. So um, we know that requests may be infrequent for these uh, virtual stops, but we think that um, our service is not gonna become a hindrance for um, um, for trip times or creating additional traffic because uh, we've been pretty thorough about selecting pickup areas uh, that don't get in other people's ways. We're working towards uh, creating a app that basically pulls in all um, uh, transportation information from all the different agencies. And that's gonna take a while, but I think that's the goal that we have in the future. Cool, well, thank you all. Um, I personally think that the app is a uh, part of our transportation futures, um, but I think the, the jump or the dive of all public agencies to get into this uh, really buzzy uh, type of service is a trend. Um, we'll see what happens, um, but if you have questions, let me know. And I wanna introduce uh, my colleague, Robin, She's going to present on mobility hubs. It connects all of uh, our transportation services. And um, let's go, Robin. My name is Robin Aksu, and I work at LADOT with Nora. And I'm going to be discussing with you today mobility hubs. So we are going to be requesting, we're going to be sending, some, sending out a request for a proposal. So in government, what we do is we think about projects, we come up with something, we write a scope of work and then we send it out to everyone so all these companies can come and submit their bids and then we go ahead and select who we want to work with. So what's a mobility hub? This is the question that everybody keeps asking. So it's everything, secure bicycle parking, transit, rail, scooter share, car share. Have you guys watched the movie Field of Dreams? If you build it, we, it, they will come. We're building the infrastructure for all of these modes of transportation to come. But something key about this is that we're working for an interactive kiosk and a mobile application. Because when you're sitting on the rail and you're like, how am I gonna walk those five blocks? Don't worry about it, that's what we're working on. <laughs> so we are proposing 13 mobility, mobility hubs. It's kind of faded, but you can see these little blue dots. We're looking at five in downtown, five in Hollywood, and three in Long Beach. They will all be off of rail stations. So these are kind of a super hub. We are also saying over 83 satellite hubs. A satellite hub is two or more modes of transportation. But a super mobility hub, they have the interactive kiosk for you. So what is our project vision? I always tell people we're Angelinos, we're temperamental to weather. If it's over 75 degrees, we don't want to walk. If it's under 74 degrees, we don't want to walk. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're really looking towards that first last mile mile. A lot of people will drive because they're like, where am I going to go? When I get off the rail, I don't want to walk those four blocks because there's no buses there. So that's what we're working towards, closing that gap. So as I mentioned, we have a physical component, which is actually those super hubs and the satellite hubs. But the really big thing is this technology component, that application that's going to bring all those modes of transportation to your fingertips, that website that you can check on in the comfort of your home. Or what about all the tourists that just show up and they have an interactive kiosk 
that they can be like, hey, I can use this, this, and this to get where I need to go. So money, money is a big thing. So this project, as Nora said, we're in government. In 2009, yes, let that settle in, we had two innovative engineers that came up with this concept. But back then, everyone was like, what is bike share? No one's gonna go in a stranger's car, Uber, Lyft. And so, because of that, we were able to get funding, and it's called Job Access Reverse Commute. This funding is no longer available. Last year was apparently the last time they released our funding. So, with this money, what it means is that we need to, it's huge on equity, that big fancy word. So we need to get people to work, and to school, and to training centers. So we're gonna provide subsidies from mobility hubs for people to get to those locations. But that means if you want to play with mobility hubs, we need your data. Because this is the federal government. We don't mess around. We also do have <laughs> $1.6 million for the first mile, last mile, which is coming from Metro. So if this is a little bit more on JARC. This is what we're doing. We're getting people around. A lot of those third shift people that don't know how to get where they need to go because it's dark, it's cold, the buses run every hour. We're trying to help them. So mobility hubs are for everyone. I can't stress this enough. So a little bit about our design. This is a future concept, very futuristic. And here we have the secure bicycle parking. Everybody looks so happy. And then we have the rail. There's some trees, it's beautiful. So last year we partnered with BMW Design Works. And in that process, we had two workshops, one with internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. So these were the four themes that they came up with. Comfort, you have to be comfortable to use something. I'm not gonna lie, if it's over 72, I'm not happy. I wanna take off a sweater and I want air conditioning. Community, nothing is successful without the support of your community. If your community does not buy into it, then game over. Communication. In Los Angeles, we have very many people that speak a lot of different languages. In 2028, we're gonna have the Olympics. So communication is key and making it easy for people. So imagine in a perfect world, I'm not gonna say this is gonna happen, but I wish it would. You come from, my husband's from Turkey. So his phone's in Turkish. He comes up to the interactive kiosk. It connects in Wi-Fi. It recognizes his phones in Turkish. It gives him all the information from the kiosk in Turkish. Wouldn't that be a great way to communicate with people? And last but not least, connections. Seamless connections. Connections is a big word, and I need to stress one thing. Not only are we trying to connect different modes of transportation, but we're trying to connect communities. How many of you know your neighbors? Probably not that many. Thank you, one. <laughs> I got one, two. Imagine something about buses. When you ride a bus, you know someone's coming. So our commuter express bus, there will be people that will stop the bus driver like, no, 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 Nora's coming. She always boards this bus. That's a sense of community. And that's something that technology Honestly, all we do is walk around with our phones. I have no idea, I put my earbuds in and I don't wanna to talk to anyone. But here we wanna build a sense of community in these locations. So, why are we doing all of this? For the future, for our community, and for just people. Because in the end, all we want is a seamless connection. So keep a lookout. And when you do, please stop by and look at it and tell all your friends about it. And again, I told you that we will be providing subsidies. So if any of you, once you graduate, are then working with a community-based organization, you can always tell them Mobility Hubs does offer subsidies for low-income individuals to get to work, school, or work training. Thank you so much. All right, let's give it up.